Hey guys, welcome back. Alex from the Unknown Gamers here. Uh, it's been a while since I played uh, Doki Doki Literature Club, so um, let me just get right into it. Uh, I think it's this one, pretty sure. The two of us enter the classroom. Sorry, heads straight for the closet, and I follow. Oh yeah, we're getting art supplies. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sorry, puts a, pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sorry, starts pulling various crayons out of a box, reading the colors' names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. <sighs> fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Uh, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Yeah. So he bends over and smacks her forehead right into a shelf. She falls onto the floor. The crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, wow, 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 wow. You okay? My forehead. Sorry, clutches her forehead. Geez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hand from her forehead. Also, crayons definitely all over the floor there. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There, a huge red mark in the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. We should find you some ice. Alex. Or would I even find ice around this time? Yeah, I guess a cold drink will do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. That's pretty good. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be back, right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since I'm going to use a nice pack rather than a drink. But I mean, it's going to get drink after, so... But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Here, Sayori. I hand Sayori a bottle of apple juice. I like how she didn't move, it just appeared. It's nice and cold. It also looks like someone drank some of it, like at least half of it. Unless you just get like that much in your drinks, but drinks aren't usually stingy. This isn't a bag of chips, like seriously. <laughs> Sorry, opens up the cap and starts drinking from it. Sorry, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Okay, that explains why it's been drank. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sorry places the bottle against the bump on her forehead. It stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. See, now that makes sense. Now, if they just, like, pasted them around, it would have been a little better. Hey, Alex. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, what do you mean? You know, how we used to play outside all the time. I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get her myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I'd start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. 
He would try really hard to get me to stop crying. Yeah, because I'd get in trouble. <laughs> it was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kinda like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you into the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Alex... I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes down to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right, Alex. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself. There's no telling where we'll end up for our college or after that. Uh, hey guys, um, my mouse keeps glitching out. I'm just gonna, like, stop and edit in the next part. Alright guys, sorry for that, like, momentary, um, pause for you guys. Uh, we got a new battery. It was, like, kind of clicking, so I hope that doesn't, like, explode and kill my mouse. Like, when I was pressing on it. I thought I was, like, trying to crush it, but... Anyhow, back to the video. Or, yeah, back to the video. Back to Doki Doki Literature Club. So, it would be more fair for me to make any promise, sis. But... Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Suri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. They remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sorry, hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Uh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sorry out of the classroom. Sorry plays with her bangs and tries to hide the bump without without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing, I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Eh, sorry, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with crayons and smacked my forehead into a shelf. <laughs> well, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it, right? Eh? Sorry, friend, he glances around herself. I- I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all, right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Alex. Ah, well, Sayori. Failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Who should I show my poem to first? I think I'm just gonna go with the same pattern. Yuri, Natsuki, Sayori, Monica. Hmm. Question is, do I want to wait? Because I know this will take a while. But it'd be like a nine minute video if I waited. 
I'll do Yuri's because I think she she talks the most, and then I'll probably stop it there and then do the next three in the next video. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Alex. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Huh? It, it's nothing. I'm just happy. Healthy. I'm just healthy. I'm. I'm just healthy. Yep. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. You know, you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can get you a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I, I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course! Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods, and timid hands me her poem, and, oh, and timidly hands me her poem. Handwriting. Yep. I don't, I don't know why, okay. Okay, this is gonna be another decoding. Hmm. Totally forgot. Okay. Let's see, uh, the, the raccoon, uh, the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by a scuttling of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an un... one... one... Der hmm. Uh... Oh, okay. As an ordinary human, I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon will that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptoms. The bread. My hungry curiosity. The raccoon. An urge. The moon increments its phase, is its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. I'm perhaps, uh, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlov Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Uh, but the, I, I think I got all those words right. Also, um, talking about a knife now and how much she enjoys her knife. Yep, that's uh little surprising for the shy girl. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. Oh, you know, uh, a desire to gut a raccoon, but just feeding it instead, getting it to trust her so she can murder it. No, I'm kidding. I hope. <laughs> Anyhow, that's that's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, and if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I 
think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge my more u unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Alex? Well, all of the porn that I watch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I guess I do. Like the porn. <laughs> I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting it a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. <clears throat> Alright, well, I'm gonna end this video, keep it short, because the next one I'll read the next three. And, uh, I'll read the next three, and then probably go on after, but the last time that was like 38 minutes just for that. So I'll do Natsuki's, and the next time I'll do Sayori and Monica to finish off. Since this one's a little bit, sh well, I guess it's technically average, but, hmm. Well, I can admit, it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's first, Sayori's poem from yesterday. Huh? I think so. Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. She never struck me as her type. Sorry, has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. <laughs> uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way: if I weren't, if it weren't for me, she probably would have just flown away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say that we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders, that's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I tried to- I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has lots of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it hurts, it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. And the world will be better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Um... I was thinking this poem was, like, about, uh... People, like, clinging to one thing, and then it would, like, switch around. And be like, I guess she's not so bad. But no, no, she just straight up, straight up hates. Okay. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yes. I agree. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I uh... Should probably drink some water. But... Onward, to the next video. Or, not the next video. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut it here. Just cut! No, no of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain a complicated issue with a much simpler analogy. And it helps you realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of the poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... It doesn't matter. It can't be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. The 
but that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone, and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. You read about something similar today. I was about to mention that, to be honest. I was just gonna wait till Mitsuki was done talking. <laughs> Well, I guess, uh, me and me are on the same wavelength. <laughs> huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby at first. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about these things. Really? Well... I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Mitsuki has trouble finding words. I I guess I should not try not to be so mean to her. She feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Jiri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good m message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Well, we didn't even talk about doing another one yet. So... Man, you should've been conditioned. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Well, anyhow, I'm gonna end it here, guys. It's, uh... 41 minutes, or should be, approximately, because I had to, yeah, I have to take out that other part and whatnot, um, so, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one, Bye bye